Hi, welcome to my channel. Today's video, leave it alone and it will come. Leave it alone and it will manifest. Why is that? And what happens when we are actively trying to manifest something from a place of not having it? So not from a place of feeling good and feeling content anyway and accepting of the moment. Um, a little bit like that, but a, a, a lot more, um, not gonna use the word lack as such, um, more the observation of not having it, if you know what I mean, the observation of 3D reality as it is. Okay, I'm an author and I'm a coach. Um, just to let you know that I do have some packages on my website now. I've had so many people ask me for that and I've taken a while to get around to doing it, but there are three different packages on there now and one is a relationship package, um, which has proven to be my most popular so far, <laughs> of course. Okay, let's look at this in terms of frequency. So we are all vibrating, everything is vibrating, everything in the universe is vibrating. We are vibrating. Um, our vibration is our energy and our energy can be, um, can be manipulated, influenced. So whichever, whatever our energy is doing at any given time, we can change it. We have the power to change it. It's just there on default most of the time, a default feeling about something because we get used to that feeling and it just becomes natural. So we're naturally in that feeling, but we do not have to be. So let's look at it like this. Okay, you are trying to manifest something, but not from a place of um, acceptance of what is now. So you are doing it from the point of lack, a place of lack, but you're not feeling hugely lackful and hugely um, desperate or anything like that, but you are noticing that you don't have it basically. So your primary uh, signal is, I don't have it at the moment. So you are tuned in to the frequency of, I don't have it at the moment. And then you are saying, you are going internal and saying, I want this, please can I have this? We'll just say it like it's a question. But that is on a different frequency. So basically the question and the answer are on two completely different frequencies. So if you are looking at manifesting from that point of not having it, noticing that you don't have it, that's the frequency that you are, um, emitting basically the signal that you are emitting the frequency that you are putting out there so that has to show back to you because reality can't do anything else but show back to you the frequency at which you are vibrating okay so imagine you're on radio one you're tuned into radio one and you want to listen to radio two you want to hear all the tracks on radio two but you are tuned into radio one well you cannot hear radio two whilst you are tuned into radio one. So that's what's going on here. The question and the answer on two completely different frequencies. So what do you do about that? So how does leaving it alone help? You remove that frequency of, I don't have this, where is it? What can I do to get it? You remove that or you at least relax on it to a point that you are not always sending out that signal. You might send it out now and again, but a lot of the time you're sending out a signal of, I'm, I'm free, you know, I am open to this. Um, you don't have that white noise going on all of the time. That is you on, not on the same frequency, not on the frequency of where the hell is it? Um, I'm feeling good, I, I don't feel super attached, but I still can't see it in my reality. As soon as you start asking that question, imagine it as a frequency. That's the frequency that I am sending out there. So I can only get that back. I can't then get back what I'm wanting to manifest because it's on a wholly different frequency. There comes a point when we have to leave it alone and we have to let reality move for us, bend for us, whichever way you look at it, that is part of the process. The rational mind, the only part of the process um, that includes the rational mind is the instruction of the subconscious. So, I mean, you can look at the subconscious as a subconscious, you can look at the subconscious as God within, a source, as the universe, but try and think of it as being internal rather than external. Um, so the, the instruction obviously is very important, but once we've made that instruction, what's the point in keep making the instruction and making the instruction? Imagine which I, I really feel this, it's all about us. Now, you know what you want. You don't have to keep asking yourself the same thing over and over again, because you've already heard yourself. You heard it the first time and you took it in. Your subconscious would have taken it in and would be dealing with it. But if you keep asking, it, you're, you keep saying, I don't have it, I don't have it. So you are vibrating at that frequency. So you're going to see more of that. So leaving it alone is letting it be, letting the situation be whatever it is now, letting reality be whatever it is, knowing that it will change once you stop pushing at it. Imagine that you are poking it 
Do you hate being poked? I li I hate being poked. It's the worst thing. If somebody pokes me to get my intention. Ooh, it makes me crazy. Uh, imagine that's what's happening when you're poking at reality. Come on, come on, come on. Where is it? You can't get A when you're vibrating B. It, it just isn't possible. But you can be on and off like that. But if mostly you're in a state of acceptance. And acceptance is purely, okay, it is what it is now. The 3D that I can see at the moment is what it is now. Okay, well, let's just look at it this way. It is what it is for a reason. So when I when this does show up for me, I'll be really glad that it showed up at that time because it would be the perfect time. You have to spin your perception, really, of time um, and make it good for you. Make Give yourself a slightly different feeling about it inside. Just shift yourself. Even if it's slightly, these little shifts, these tiny little shifts that seem really insignificant are actually very significant. A, a minuscule shift internally can have massive effects um, on the external externally so leave it alone let reality do its stuff let it come don't keep pushing it further down your reality line by interfering and using your rational mind so trying to take calculated action in order to manifest it sometimes we stop manifesting and we go yeah I'm going to stop doing anything but then we are still still looking for it really, still observing reality, even though we're not actually doing anything because we think, okay, I've stopped manifesting now, so now it should come. It's not really in the just the stopping, it's in the feeling as well. So it's in the, I am going to accept whatever is going on now, knowing that I've done all that I can do and I am giving it over to that part of me that deals with this stuff. This bit doesn't deal with it, this bit does, and I'm giving it over to that. So see if you can find, um, when you do that, see if you can feel a slight shift in your conscious awareness of it, whatever. Even if you can't really put your finger on what has changed, if you feel something slightly different, then that is really the start of you allowing this to happen. And it's a practice. It's a practice not getting, you know, getting yourself out of the manifesting loop because you can go on and on and on manifesting things. If I want something in my life, I never actively try to manifest it. I feel it, I feel the desire for it. I tell myself why it's going to enhance my life. And I kind of know that naturally. Tell myself that and then just go, okay, in a me, whatever I call it at the time. Um, can you do stuff and sort that out for me, please? I've only asked once. I do not need to ask it. Very occasionally, I will find myself doing that if it's been quite a bit of time. And then I think, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Your subconscious takes in everything. You don't need to ask again. You're just gonna set yourself on a course of keep asking, keep asking if you do that. So I remind myself and don't do it. Rarely do I do that now. Rarely do I do it because I know that it won't make any difference whatsoever. It will just set me on the frequency of I don't have it. So I'd rather just be getting on with my life and focusing some attention on other things. So splitting my attention, so uh, my focus. So if I really want this thing, then what else would I like in my life? Okay, what else would I like to do at the moment or see in my reality? Okay, let's um, dilute this really strong focus that's on this thing here and move it around a bit. So you're, you're splitting it into parts and that way you're not hyper-focused on that one thing so you don't obsess about it um, and you allow it to happen. Okay, I hope this was useful. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I'd love you to do that.